It's been called the Miami of Europe, the place to be and is the only European city that is rivaling London and Paris in terms of GDP. The Spanish capital of Madrid is on the up. So what's been happening, what's going on and is Madrid about to become Europe's next major city? Let's get right into it. If you're new here, my name is Johnny. I'm originally from the UK, but I've been living and working here in Madrid for the past four and a half years. The first time I visited Madrid was in December 2016 and I really liked the city. But my opinion was that it was very much a Spanish city, you know, historical architecture, a lot of culture culture in that sense, but it didn't really stand out as a city like a London or a Paris does when you go and visit there. But since moving here in 2020, I've gradually observed little changes here and there in the way the city runs, operates, and I also noticed signs that the city was increasing in popularity bit by bit. Fast forward to 2024 and my observations and my thoughts have been confirmed with Madrid now on the radar as a potential major European city and being talked about in the international press. First, let's Let's look at some of the key points mentioned in an article from El Economista, which is a Spanish uh, economy and finance outlet, where it talks a bit about some of the factors that have led to Madrid's growth. And it mentions namely the fact that it's home to several major European banks, the likes of BBVA and Santander, two of the biggest banks in the world, are Spanish banks and they have their headquarters in Madrid. It also talks about GDP growth in Madrid as well, with a 2.3% increase versus 2022 being observed last year. And this is also the article that mentions that Madrid rivals those cities like London and Paris when it comes to GDP in terms of European major cities. And when we look at GDP per capita, Madrid is 17% higher than the EU 27 average. As I say though, it's not just in Spain where Madrid is starting to catch people's eyes. The Economist has also picked up on the phenom that is going on in Madrid right now. And in its article about Madrid's growth, it mentions how the foreign population in Madrid has grown 20% since 2016, with a lot of people moving over from Latin America. But there's also, of course, people who've moved over from elsewhere in Europe and other parts of the world as well. It also mentions how tourism is on the increase in Madrid and it also underlines a quote from Mayor José Luis Martínez Almeida who said that Madrid was once the best kept secret but is now the place to be. So what things have been going on in Madrid that could have been catalysts or factors that have played a role in Madrid's boom that it's going through right now? Wind back to end of 2020 and through 2021 when we we're in the pandemic and the Spanish central government decided to delegate the authority of determining COVID restrictions by autonomous region in Spain. And there were autonomous regions in Spain, such as Catalonia and Valencia, that had quite strict restrictions uh, during that period. Madrid, however, took a much more relaxed approach in terms of restrictions and opening hours and what businesses were open. So there was a lot of business activity and economic activity going on in that time. And that relaxed policy as well also led to an influx of tourists in 2021. If you go back to 2021 on the channel, you'll see that another YouTuber and I actually made a video whilst he came to visit Madrid <laughs> during that exact period of time. So Madrid obviously has an advantage as the capital of Spain. It's not just, you know, the administrative uh, governmental capital. It is also the economic capital of Spain. You'll find a lot of international companies, a lot of businesses here that come to do business. And it also attracts a lot of foreign investment. Going back to that Economist article, it mentions that Madrid captures about 71% of foreign direct investment in Spain. And so why might multinationals and individuals be drawn to Madrid? Well, as I mentioned in previous videos on the channel as well, taxation in general in Madrid is a lot lower than in other parts of the country. If you look at the personal income tax rates and compare them to other autonomous communities, you'll see that Madrid has much lower rates and a much lower top rate that you'll pay in terms of income tax as well when you get to the very top band. And the regional government here also abolished the wealth tax on high net worth individuals residing in the Madrid community, as well as significantly reducing inheritance tax and tax on donations on direct descendants, so from a parent to a child. Now, outside of the politics and kind of governmental aspect of things, uh, we can also take a look at something that Spanish flag carrier Iberia is doing in terms of drawing people to Madrid. Similar to how carriers like Qatar Airways and Turkish Airlines have stopovers in Doha and Istanbul respectively, Iberia has launched a stopover program in Madrid, where when you fly with Iberia and you have a stopover in Madrid, you can opt to stay in Madrid for one to six nights as part of the stopover program, and you'll get a range of exclusive benefits and discounts through that stopover program with Iberia, essentially, again, to promote tourism and visitors to come to the city. So all of these things that are going on right now have had a positive impact, but perhaps the best is yet to come as there are some very significant developments going on in the city right now that could completely change what Madrid looks like today to what it will look like in the future. The Spanish central government and airport operator Aena are currently laying the groundwork and making a start on an expansion plan for the Madrid Barajas airport, which will see a huge increase in the airport's capacity from 70 million passengers up to 90 million passengers per year. The project is worth about 2.4 billion euros, with Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez saying that the airport will be 
a mark of Spanish culture and identity and give it the potential to be one of the fastest growing airports in Europe. In addition to developing the airport itself, there are plans to extend the AVE high-speed train network from Madrid Tamartin station up to Madrid Barajas airport, which would be about eight kilometers of track to people arriving at the airport directly by train to the north, the south, and the east of Spain. Those of you who visited Paris and arrived at Charles de Gaulle airport, you'll know that a similar project is already in place in France with there being a TGV high-speed station at Charles de Gaulle airport. And those trains run through the center of Paris through to other parts of the country. As I say, when I arrived in Madrid, it was very much a Spanish city with a lot of Spanish and historical architecture. But what if I told you that in addition to the four towers on Paseo de la Castellana, there is a big new central business district development going on that will see even more skyscrapers and a futuristic transformation of the city. What I'm talking about here is the new north development in Spanish known as Madrid Nuevo Norte. And this is a major urban development going on around the Chamartín station area that will see a significant expansion of the city with new residential areas, new offices, as I said, large skyscrapers. As it's such a significant development, this is expected to be finished between 2045 and 2050. And this new development is expected to create about 300,000 new jobs and bring an additional 15 billion euros to the Spanish economy. And formally, a recent announcement in the world of Formula One has also been good news for Madrid. Madrid has actually won the contract to host the Spanish Grand Prix from 2026 to 2035. And the proposed circuit will run through and around the area of the Ifema Conference Center. And so every year from 2026 up till 2035, Madrid will be hosting one of the biggest events in the sporting calendar year, or the motorsporting calendar year, I should say. So a lot going on that's expected to bring a lot of good to the city. So why would someone move to Madrid? First, we'll start with the weather. How could I not start with the weather as a British person? <laughs> the weather in Madrid is really good pretty much all year round. It's a very dry climate, so the rain is very much concentrated in a few months in the spring and kind of the October, November time in the autumn as well. And other than that, with the exception of the months of June, July and August, when it is boiling hot outside and, you know, you don't want to set foot in the street and the nights in December and January, days are not so bad, but the nights can get pretty cold. The weather is really good, really nice all year round, I would say. And whatever time of year it is in Madrid, there is always something to do. There's always something fun going on, whether it's visiting one of the parks like the Retiro, Casa de Campo, or one of the more local parks, you know, there are loads spread around Madrid. There is sport all year round. Obviously, it just mentioned the Formula One, but you've got, you know, Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid that are here, they're playing football. There are concerts, there's a basketball team here. If you're not into sports, there's shopping centers, there's theaters, cinemas. The food here, oh my gosh, is fantastic. When you come to Madrid, you will eat good. Whether you like Spanish food or whether you like international food, you will find pretty much whatever you are looking for. You just need to go on a channel like Spain Revealed and see the number of tapas crawls and visits that he's done around different areas of Madrid to see how good the Spanish food is in Madrid. But as I say, you can also find, you know, fast food, food from Latin America, food from the Middle East, Asian food, Japanese, Chinese, Korean, whatever. Food tourism in Madrid is a big thing and it is fantastic. Personally, I find things in Madrid to be very reasonably priced as well. If you're coming from Northern Europe or North America, you'll find it to be much, much cheaper. Cost of living has been on the increase of so the price of things has gone up. But whilst I don't necessarily look at things and say that's cheap, very rarely do I look at something as well and say that's expensive. I feel like generally speaking, I pay a fair price for everyday items. Now rent and accommodation is obviously a different story. So <laughs> do take this with a pinch of salt, what I'm saying. It's very easy to get around Madrid. Uh, the Metro is very well connected. It is the 10th largest network in the world at around 895 kilometers in length. And it also ranks pretty well in terms of satisfaction and quality. The bus network in the center of Madrid is pretty good as well, but you've also got a range of different taxi options like Free Now, like Bolt, Uber, Cabify. And you've also got ride sharing options now as well, where you can find a car parked and just drive it, you know, 15, 20 minutes to wherever you need to be with the likes of Weeble, City, GoTo. And if a car is too much, then you've got mopeds that do the same thing as well. So very easy to get around Madrid, very quick, very well connected with the rest of Spain as well. Of course, you've got the Ave high speed trains, which go up to almost 400 kilometers per hour. So your average trip from Madrid to Barcelona will take about three hours to Valencia uh, will take about two hours and to the south of Spain you can be there in three to four hours on the train depending on where it is you're going and it's very well connected in terms of international travel as well both to the rest of Europe very well connected to Latin America and North America as well you've also got good connections to Asia and the Middle East so with all that said do I think Madrid will become the next best city and what are some of the things that might potentially hold it back talked about the regional government and some of the things they've done here well the regional government in Madrid is actually the opposition party in the kind of the national Congress. So the Spanish central government is led by the 
Socialist Workers' Party, the PSOE, and the Madrid regional government is led by the opposition party, the People's Party or Partido Popular in Spanish. So a lot of arguing, these parties often find themselves at odds with each other on a range of different issues. So constant tension and arguing could of course present challenges uh, going forward if the two parties kind of end up at an impasse and none of them are able to really do anything for the city. In a few recent videos, I've talked about all the different ways that people can move to Spain. So, you know, things like the digital nomad visa, the golden visa for people looking to invest in property. With the regional government having abolished the wealth tax, that could make it attractive for people who are looking to perhaps invest in property in Madrid via the golden visa route. And Madrid, a fantastic city for digital nomads, people looking to explore and enjoy the lifestyle as well. There's also the Beckham law, the tax advantages to try and attract people to move to Spain as well. So I think there's a lot of relatively attractive ways for people to move to Spain through some of these incentives. Will these people stay long term is a different story. There are of course competing schemes in other European countries when it comes to tax advantages for foreigners moving to the country and there's you know other countries that are very competitive in terms of corporate and personal income tax in the world as well. So very similar to what I said in a video about Portugal you know I think if someone is really looking for the optimal business structure or tax structure then Spain is maybe not necessarily the place but if you want to you know live a good life and really enjoy Spanish culture immerse yourself everything that comes with Spanish culture then of course a great place to come and the people that like that I think will stay in the country. If a lot of people do come to Spain as well then of course housing is going to be an issue there's of course the Madrid Nuevo Norte development which is underway but it's going to be another you know 20 years before that's finished and the center of Madrid is very packed as it is so probably more housing needs to be built in the surrounding areas of Madrid as well otherwise I think there's potential to see you know a similar cost of living and housing crisis that Lisbon is facing right now it could happen in Madrid although Madrid is a much bigger city it has a bigger capacity but it could be really stretched further if there is a big influx of people who are drawn to the city and if those developments do happen on the outside one of the weak points I think in terms of public transport in Madrid is perhaps the suburban train network the cercanías network now it is there granted there is a suburban train network to get from the outside of Madrid into the center however the frequency age of the trains the reliability is not great now Renfe the operator of the Cercanías network is investing in new trains and looking at you know developing some of the lines renovating stations etc so it's on the right track but again probably more needs to be done if there's going to be a big population in the outskirts of Madrid in the suburban areas due to a big population growth and finally the big one is of course when it comes to wealth creation and job creation in Spain salaries are much lower than in other European countries here unemployment very high generally in Spain as well has been a challenge not so much in Madrid but in other parts of the country but to really kind of attract the big companies and international business. Oxford Economics, which is quoted in the El Economista uh, Spanish article that I mentioned at the beginning, mentioned that this is a hurdle that Madrid still needs to overcome to be really, really up there with the Londons and the Parises for it to become Europe's next major big city. Those are my thoughts, guys. I hope you found this video interesting. Leave a comment and let me know, have you been to Madrid and do you think it's really on the up and is poised to be the next major European city? Till next time, I'll see you on the next one and let's get this money.